Hello crafty friends, welcome to another of our beverage themed clean and simple card videos. So far in this series I have used all of these dies. Today I think I'm going to use these sort of old fashioned -y tea slash coffee pot and cup dies. Tomorrow's video, which will be the last in the series, I'm going to use these dies and I might mix them with these ones. So come back tomorrow for those. To get going today, I'm going to smush some salvage patina on this piece of smooth white cardstock. So I've added the ink to my glass mat, added some water to turn it into a paint, and now I'm going to pick it up with my smusher and smush it on, not covering everything, leaving some white peeking through. And now I'm going to dry this with my hairdryer. And I'm going to add another layer where I can get the lid off. And lastly, I'm going to add a layer of tattered rose distress oxide. These two colours together really give me a kind of art deco vibe I think. Now I'm going to use this to die cut my coffee pot and cups and saucer but I'm going to cut multiple because I want to do some layering up of my die cuts so they get a really dimensional look. But I do want three pots and two of each of those. I've chosen one of each item to be the base of my crockery. I'm sticking these to a piece of smooth white cardstock and I will cut these out in a bit but the smooth white cardstock is there to add a base and allow me to add some glossy accents to everything in a bit. I don't need that handle stuck down. So those are all stuck down now. I'm going to cut them out so I can work on them loose as it were. I want to put some tea and coffee in my cups. So I've got a finger dauber here with a bit of vintage photo distress oxide on it. And I'm going to dust these bits very lightly. These are the bits that actually came out. I don't want it too in your face. I haven't actually added any ink onto the door, but this is just residual ink. And I can Let's see which way up this goes before. It should be a perfect ellipse, but you never know. Yes. Now for some layering, I'm going to take the bottom bit and the spout and the handle off of this die cut. We don't need those anymore. And I'm going to run my, just to make sure it's clean, my embossing tool around the outside to bevel the edges so that it doesn't look like I've snipped it with scissors. Now I'm going to dip that in the glue. I do apologise for the background noise. It is summer, so I need to work with the windows and the doors open. Let the neighbours and the council are also cutting their grass. And this is what it's going to be like till the autumn when I close the doors and the windows again. Now I'm going to chop off the lid and bevel the edges. I've just snipped. So I might chop the little Nobble off the top as well. Dip that in glue. 
and pop that on the top. I like that. So now my pot has a bit more actual dimension. If I wanted to be really detail oriented, then I could cut a sliver here and stick it on for the rim of the lid. But I think that might be a bit too fiddly and would end up looking messy rather than adding to anything. Now for the cups, I'm just going to snip off the handles. Just follow the edge around and I'm going to snip off the base and run around with the embossing tool, dip it in glue. Actually, what I also want to do is snip off the back of the cup because that's going to be recessed. And then I can add this on top of here. And now I've got a nice dimensional cup. And I'll do exactly the same to this mug. Oh no, I've chopped the wrong handle off. Never mind, we'll keep that. <laughs> Did the wrong one. Oh dear. So with these, I'm going to cover them eventually in glossy accents or crystal glaze, whichever bottle is unbuttoned. But not until I've stuck them on the card because I don't want them all sticky and wet when I'm trying to handle them. My card blank is going to be four by six inches, smooth white cardstock with a white panel on top. And I'm thinking of having my cups and teapot, etc., down here like this. So I want something for them to sit on, I think. And I think I'll have the sentiment up here to get a diagonal design. I've got this net die, which I thought would make a nice backdrop to my pots and I'm going to cut it out in smooth white cardstock and see what it looks like. So I think that will work. It's a bit wide so I'm going to cut it a bit smaller on this side. Gently squish those edges down a bit so they don't look so scissor cut. I think I'll cut another one of these, but before I do, I'm going to take my tattered rose and use this as a stencil to add a very light blush of peachy pink in the background. So I've cut another one, shortened it like I did the first one, and, and I'm putting some sticky on the back in a form of glue, and I'm going to add it here. I'll press that down with a bit of non-stick paper, and now we have Almost the idea of maybe a checkered tablecloth. And now I've got something to sit my crockery on. You know, I'm not sure I'm going to use the saucer. I think I might leave that. Before I stick anything else down though, I want to add some sandwich patina splatters. So I've masked off this portion of my card to keep it clean. And I've got a bit of salvage patina paint, which I'm going to pick up with my paintbrush and just gently spatter on in this area. Might just move that slightly so we don't get such a harsh line. And I'll dry this with my hairdryer. And it's time to add the panel to my card. Before I stick my crockery on, I'm going to stamp my sentiment. This is just a little hello card. I'm going to stamp it in vintage photo so it ties in with the coffee and or tea in the cups. So I'll add the pot first. About there, I think.
And now we've got my handleless mug. And I'm just going to stick the handle on the back, I think. It's probably the easiest thing to do. There we go. That's fine now. So that's going to go on top of there. And then that's going to go maybe somewhere like that. Like that. Thinking I'm going to put this one around about level with this coffee pot. Now there's some differences in thickness in the die cuts here so I think I might pop a couple of bits. In fact what might be really useful is if I take some of these little squares that came out of the net die, lay them up into little pillars and pop them underneath just to give a little bit of stability, keep things level. But before I stick this one down, I think I'll just pop some squares on the lower portion of this mug But before I stick my mug down over my coffee pot, I'm going to crystal glaze the coffee pot. I'm going to flood the little recesses, the stars, the dots, with glaze, so they look as if they're just little white embellishment stuck on the teapot. And I'll do this coffee cup too and the coffee itself can be glazed because it's a liquid and it's shiny. The trick is not to squirt too much out, it's better to squirt a little bit out and it'd be not enough so you just squirt a bit more than to absolutely flood it. Now for this coffee cup. Right, I need to put that somewhere safe so all of that crystal glaze has a chance to dry. And once that's done, I'll take some photos and stick them right at the end of the video as usual. Right, I think we've managed to keep that fairly clean and simple. I do hope you've enjoyed the video and that it's given you some ideas of something you could do with similar dyes that you have in your stash. If it has, please do leave a thumbs up, let me know in the comments, subscribe, ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.